Hi, my name is Alex Kaczynski, and I'd like to welcome you to Word as Image. This thematic exhibition considers how artists experimented with written text as a visual motif throughout the 20th century. In the beginning of the century, words and letters appeared as elements in avant-garde compositions, where they were used to break down distinctions between art and the real world. At the forefront of this experimentation to challenge traditional representational strategies by abstracting form and space were pioneering Cubist and Futurist artists like Pablo Picasso and Lubov Popova, whose work is featured in the center of the gallery. Their fragmented images are interrupted by recognizable letters, which clue the viewer into the setting or subject of their compositions. By the mid-century, Pop and conceptual artists offered witty and thought-provoking encounters between pictorial and linguistic modes of expression to play with ideas of language, sound, and legibility. Others, like Andy Warhol, took inspiration from printed media, including magazines and advertisements, to critique modern consumerism. Many artists use written words to reflect on the creative process and art history in their works. A group of lithographs by California pop artist Ed Ruscha welcomes visitors to the exhibition. Born from the visual language of typography, advertising, and Los Angeles city signage, the text in Ed Ruscha's oeuvre takes on an aesthetic life of its own. In these four lithographs from 1969, recognizable letters emerge from illusionistic renderings of spilled liquids or curled pieces of paper, spelling carp, Hollywood, Ooh, and Zoo, inviting us to perceive and delight in the audio-visual wordplay. Ruscha has described words as having different temperatures, by which he meant innate emotional appeals that made them compelling subjects for artistic experimentation. By isolating terms that are familiar, legible, and even iconic, Ruscha subverts the expectation that reading results in straightforward comprehension. Instead, he offers viewers an irreverent moment of recognition, uncertainty, and surprise. Blending the familiar with the humorous, Mike Mandel's baseball photographer trading cards from 1975 is both a tribute to the classic collectible sports card and a critique of the art market's preoccupation with celebrity artists. To begin, Mandel set out across the United States to create satirical portraits of contemporary photographers. He posed 134 artists in baseball gear, including Ansel Adams, Manuel Alvarez Bravo, Imogen Cunningham, and Ed Ruscha, several of whom are featured in this exhibition. Simulating the familiar sports trading card format, the featured photographer's name was printed on the front of each card, while a quote and various statistics, like the artist's preferred camera film, was printed on the back. Mandel produced 3,000 versions of each card and packaged them in random sets of 10 with a piece of Topps chewing gum, sold at $1 each. To assemble a complete group, museums, galleries, and private collectors participated in trading card parties, where they exchanged and bartered for their favorites. Of course, like many works of art, this project intended to embrace ephemera and satirize commodification has transformed into a collector's item in its own right. The artist Connor Everts also embraces text, found objects, personal memory, and art historical references in his collage practice. In contextual shifts from 2004, the most recent work in the show, Everts offers a meditation on art making and the traditional art historical canon. He combines a reproduction of a detail from Lorenzo Ghiberti's 15th century bronze Florentine baptistry doors, circa 1425 to 37, with an invitation from the opening of the Norton Simon Museum's 2004 exhibition, Painted Poems, Rajput Paintings from the Ramesh and Urmil Kapoor Collection, featuring Krishna Converses with the Messenger. For Everts, words were aesthetic forms in their own right. Applied to the gesso and painted surface here are handwritten characters from both English and languages that he could not understand, such as the Chinese verb guang, meaning to stroll, ramble, roam, or visit. 
Other text was taken from a torn piece of paper discovered on a walk or seemingly pulled from a grocery list or recipe. Here language and image coexist harmoniously in the service of creative expression and embody the beauty of chance encounters. Word as Image highlights objects from the Norton Simon collections that incorporate text and challenge us to find new ways of making meaning. No matter which path you take through the gallery, I hope you pause and delight in how artists have posited words as an essential part of visual culture.